right, like usual, we're at the usual bait spot. Winds are dropping a little bit. By the middle of next week, uh, hopefully I can get back on the water on the kayak. It's getting later uh, for the current to start moving, so I have to, I only get a couple of hours in the evening. Otherwise the, the current's reverse and, and it's not really fishable to catch bait here or on the bridge uh, just for fishing. So, I'm gonna see if I can get some pinfish. Ah, shit, got a bunch of snappers. And a mullet. <laughs> nice mullet. If I was doing some shark fishing, that would definitely come in handy. Get rid of these snappers. Mullet would be good bait, but not today. Snappers can be free. This size pinfish is what we're looking for. Get all these good fish gone. These boys go home. Now, these guys are all good. Some of these bigger ones I'll, I won't use. But all the rest of these will be good. Quick update on where we're at, at Saddle Bunch number five. Um, I'm actually just wanting to pick up a quick snapper or two to do a little, uh, foolproof fish barbecue one that you can't mess up but it's probably one of the best ways to barbecue uh, fish especially the snappers but uh, I stopped by the bait spot today I'm going to be trying uh, the live pin fish I'm not going to be chumming with the uh, frozen chum block I, uh, I brought one baggie of the glass minnows just to to sprinkle out there but primarily I want to use these uh these liveies you can see there maybe you can't see there but I got about a dozen and hopefully it doesn't take I shouldn't take that many and at worst I'll use them as cut bait I brought my little bucket so I'm super happy about that but I forgot my towel, hand towel, but that's no biggie because I got water now. So anyways, I'm gonna get set up. Um, probably primarily gonna do a knocker rigs first. And then uh, if I'm not getting any luck as the sun goes down, then I'll switch to drifting back a live bait in those uh, with the uh, frozen uh, glass minnows. But anyways, that's where we're at. We're kind of at slack tide right now. Um, I have a couple hours of sunlight, hour, hour and a half of sunlight. So that should time it pretty well. And so as soon as that sun starts setting, then the tide should be moving pretty good. And then that, that'll get these guys started feeding. My high-tech uh, water getting device.
take it. Ah, stupid Jack. Man. Two Jacks. One's trying to eat the fish out of his mouth. Look at it. It's like attacking him. Three Jacks. Now what are you doing? What you got? And then all the snappers. Everything's getting all fired up and like, give me whatever you have. I screwed up, I forgot not, I didn't change out my spool. So I got this stinking 10 pound braid. So, nice fish, wrong species. Shark bait. Definitely good feeder ones. But I'll take two of these and we are good to go. Well, looks like that's our second feeder. for our filet dinner. Not so big, but I'll make a perfect filet. Okay, uh, today's cooking is going to be one of my uh, go-to methods for barbecuing fish. Um, this is a really great way if you're a little bit uh, barbecue challenged, especially for a fish that can be uh, a little tricky with uh, drying out really quickly, um, getting stuck and falling apart on your barbecue and making a mess basically. Um, this kind of takes away all that, all those issues. Um, it's quick, easy, um, and it's one of my favorites basically, even on the flavor size, as well as for ease of eating as well. Uh, so basically what I've got is um, yesterday, yesterday, last night, yesterday evening, I went out and caught a couple of snappers. Uh, this one was uh, basically a little under 14 inches. And then also the smaller ones were about 12 inches. I uh, brought it home, did a quick fillet job on it. Now this, the key to it is, is that that's basically it. You just do the, cut the fillets off. Don't skin it. Don't uh, uh, de-skin it. Don't scale it, don't do anything, just cut the fillets off. So what you end up with is you basically have a nice fillet with the skin and scale still on. And that's actually very important to leave those just as it is. So I've got those ready to go, okay? Now for preparation, you can do as much as you want or as little as you want. So what I'm gonna do one is kind of what I call it with the works. And then one is just gonna be a plain Jane, low maintenance, throw it on there just as good as like a microwave meal, okay? So what I've got is um, I'm gonna do the smaller ones, just the plain, and then the bigger flays, I'm gonna do a little bit uh, extra on it. So for the, um, the plain ones, I'm just gonna put a little bit of salt and pepper. This is actually lemon pepper. And then uh, just a little bit of olive oil. 
doesn't need to be very much. Just helps a little bit with the moisture. Um, and then with the second one, I'm going to use a little bit instead of the salt and pepper. I'm just going to go with the a Cajun spice mix. I'm going to throw on a little bit of minced garlic. Doesn't need to be a lot. That's kind of a, a bit much, but it's okay. And then for the basic one I'm doing, that's basically it. Salt, pepper, and a little bit of olive oil, or you could put butter on it. And then I'm going to put a little bit of butter on the one with the works instead of the olive oil. And this is real butter, so it gives it a little bit extra boost in the flavor there. I'm going to use one of these lemon slices to spoon this stuff up. Melted on me. And it's all going to melt together, so it's not that big of a deal how neat it is. A couple of nice pats of butter would help with that part of it. Then I'm going to go, well actually, I'm going to go with the lemons, I mean the uh, onion next. There. There. And then I've got some lemon slices, and that'll go on top of those. And that's basically it. It's all prepped, ready to go. Uh, what the basic, uh, the barbecuing part of it is, is that we're just going to do it on the barbecue, um, medium heat, put it down with the uh, skin scale side down, and that's it. You're done. You're not going to flip it. You're not going to move it. You're just going to leave it there. And what it is, is that the underside is going to be protecting the the uh, flesh from the, the flames coming up, the heat, direct heat coming up from the barbecue uh, straight up. And then the uh, scales, and then you've got skin, then you have a layer of fat, then you have the actual uh, fish meat, okay? So the bottom is protected by that more uh, intense heat coming up from the bottom. But then the top will match it by the heat just in your enclosed barbecue, just circulating around just like an oven is. So by doing that, it basically, evens out the cooking proportions. You have more heat from the bottom, a little bit less heat from the top, but it's exposed, and then it just cooks evenly all the way down. And that's the reason why that you're not going to do any flipping on it, because if you flip the, um, the, the meat side down, it's gonna dry out and burn almost instantly, and you get those flare-ups from the oils and all that. So even with, the, with this, with the uh, heavy amounts of a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of butter, it's gonna drip, it's gonna cause flame-ups, but you don't have to worry about that because those scales are not going to burn off and then you've also got the layer of skin and then like I said that fat is going to keep it moisture uh, level up in the bottom and you have the the butter and or the olive oil on the top they'll keep the top moist so it, it's it's one of those deals where you can make a mistake and leave it on for five extra minutes and it's not going to destroy your meat by just basically drying it out and burn it because of the protection that you have so it just gives you a lot more leeway in regards to lot, not sure of the, the amount of time you need to cook fish. And this will protect it if you do tend to overcook a little bit. Okay, So that's basically the quick and easy there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and toss them on the barbecue. Quick update on my crabs. They're all still woo, happy, dappy, and alive. So they're all just chilling. Still frisky. That's my favorite, the albino. Okay, barbecue's all heated up, so we're just going to go ahead and throw them on there. Turn down the heat. Got the plain ones. Got the fancy ones. There you go. And like I said, you're just going to put it on, you're going to leave it, even though, like I said, there's a little bit of a flames coming up. It's all protected by the skin and scales, so you don't have to worry about that part of it. Once I shut that lid, I'm just going to leave it closed for four or five minutes, and then I'll come and check on it. Um, but otherwise, you don't have to do anything on it. Um, you don't have to worry about the fish sticking because the scales will keep it from sticking to the grate. 
and you're all ready to go. So I'm going to shut it up and let it cook. Okay, looks like we're all good. It's been about four or five minutes. Um, you can tell because it's, uh, it's white all the way through. Yep, cooks flaky, but still moist. So we're going to go ahead and pull those off. And this is the good part. It won't stick because of the scales and the skin. So you don't have to worry about putting oil or anything on the, on your barbecue. And it leaves it nice and clean. Ooh, lost them. Save the onions. And there we go. Okay, here's the final results there. Um, we saw earlier, it's nice. Cooked all the way through, still very moist. Um, the bottom sides, the scales are still on and it cooked it all the way through. As you can see, one of these, this one was on right above the flames. So you can see it kind of uh, charred the, the scales and the skin a bit, but if you look through, it's still very moist all the way to the bottom. And that's basically how you eat this is that uh, you leave the skin, just present it just like that. And then when you eat it, you just basically flake it right off the skin. Oops. And I'll just peel right back. And it's nice, moist. Um, if you don't put the butter and the oil, like if you don't, like this is very moist, but it's cooked all the way through, but a lot of that has to do with the, um, the olive oil and the butter that's put on there. If you like yours a little drier, you could not do the oil and the uh, butter, and then it'll dry it a little bit more. But otherwise, it's cooked all the way through, very nice, flaky, and tastes great. Plus, quick and easy, and like I said, it's almost, it's almost bomb-proof. So uh, if you tend to overcook your meats, that uh, this will salvage it. So I hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching.